Good evening again, it's Malcolm. Welcome to BFA's On The Ball Show. We're back for another week of all things BFA. Um, but today we're going to go a slightly uh, on a different tangent. We're, we've got an opportunity to talk uh, to a couple of uh, guests that I've been meaning to get on for a while. And hopefully today we're going to learn a bit more about grassroots football and also about our very own beloved Sporting Bengal. We've got the captain and the main man this season, uh, Toch Singh, on to talk all things Sporting Bengal and the new setup that we have going at uh, our main senior team. So I guess without any doubt, uh, without any further ado, let's get the guys introduced. I'm going to start with the gentleman to my right. Uh, I've got um, Rav Anand. How are you doing? You all right? Yeah, very good, man. Good, good. Uh, nice to have you. So you're the uh, PR networking um, man at the, uh, at the match. So we'll talk more about that yep. in a bit more detail. But you've also got a, a history from uh, within grassroots football yeah. as well. So we want to learn more about that as well. And like I said, we've also got the main man himself, the the captain and Mr. Mr. Marvel, uh, Toch Singh from Sporting Bengal. How you doing, mate? Yeah, not bad. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on today, Toch. Right, I guess, uh, Rav, I'm going to come to you uh, first of all. Um, uh, many... Some will probably know you, those of you that are on social media, those of you that are on Facebook, and those of you that maybe are in and around the football scene within the London area, maybe beyond also, will have seen Rav around, um, especially if you've been to a lot of the do's uh, in, around the football circuit um, at grassroots level, uh, will have seen him around. But Rav, for those of you that might not know much about you, uh, give us a kind of, a, I guess, a, 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 s a snippet as to what you're about and what, what, how it all start, started for you in, in grassroots football? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I love media and I love football. Um, they're two of my, my passions and the opportunity over the last five, six years to put them together um, has enabled me to meet a lot of good people, do a lot of interesting work and, um, yeah, really enjoy what I do. Okay, um, but you, you, where, where, where did it all start for you and how, how long ago? And you mentioned media. Um, when did you all kind of? When did you really get involved in it? It was actually when I was at um, at sick form. Okay. I had an opportunity to do one of two things. I could either have done the the usual thing that we do as as Asian youngsters. We we either do business or IT. Mm -hmm. um, I had to decide what I wanted to do for university, and I had written down that I was going to do business. That was what I was going to do. Um, my father has a had a very successful um, family business. My brother um, also went into business, my sister went into HR, mm -hmm. so it would have been you know, a comfortable step for me, but I, I didn't want to do that, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, and at the time I was, as all of us who know, at that sort of age, uh, 17, 18, um, just playing five-a-side football at Goals Power League, and I just started writing match reports, just out of the blue, writing match reports, and I got quite a, actually quite a good bit of feedback. And I thought, you know what, I actually enjoy this. So this is that sixth form you started That sixth form, yeah. And I thought, I actually enjoy this. I get a lot of actual enjoyment. People seem to like what I'm writing. Um, so I thought, on the off chance, let's just see what's going on. Um, my sister was a big influence because she helped me um, look for actual university courses because I didn't think there was actually going, anything going around okay. in terms of sports journalism. All right. Um, we'll come back to you more about wh wh how, where you went from there and hopefully your involvement within uh, Kick It Out yeah. as well. Um, but let's have a quick chat with Toch. Uh, Toch, welcome to the show firstly. Thank and um, for, for those that don't know, I, I know again a lot of people are familiar with you this season in particular, but many may have seen you in, in the past. You're, 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 you're well known within our community for those footballers that have been to Glasgow. Uh, they're, they're, they're aware that you represent Hunslow. Uh, at the Glasgow UK Championships. Yeah. Um, but how did you come to get involved with Sporting Bengal? Um, I think mainly it was uh, yourself and Anwar. Uh, obviously, I've play, been fortunate enough to play with you in the past. Yeah. Uh, got to know you. Uh, got to know some of the senior players from the past, uh, Jamal. Yeah. Um, and going, getting to know them, I've always had a look out for Sporting Bengal. Uh, fortunately, this year the work situation's changed uh, so I'm able to commit um, to football before I was uh, having to take annual leave mm -hmm. in order to play Saturday just, football. Just for those that don't know, remind people what you do. Uh, <laughs> You're going to be a popular guy <laughs> doing this show. Uh, I'm a police officer but I'm one of the nice ones, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah so, um, right. But fortunately my work, work situation's changed, I'm able to commit um, yeah. and try and obviously play as high as I can mm -hmm. um, and luckily uh, I knew Anwar from before and I knew yourself um, and I found it quite comfortable in order to approach you. Okay. 
So how, what, at what level and had you been? Because I know when you, when you first came at the beginning for pre-season, you were having trials at a decent level, weren't you? you yeah, were, you yeah. Uh, I was on trial at Grey's Athletic. Um, okay. One of my best friends, uh, Jay Silver, he, he's there. Um, so he took me over there. Uh, I was there for pre-season. Um, it's, it's good, it's good, good experience. Uh, but what they do is they uh, evaluate you compared to what talent they've already got. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, they don't make the cut. Mm -hmm. But you learn, I learned a lot of things and hopefully go back and try again uh, in the summer, see okay. what happens. Right, and um, in terms of your sporting Bengal first season, um, how have you found it? How have you found the setup to start off with? Um, oh, yeah, the, the setup is probably the, the most uh, impressive thing about the club. Um, obviously, I'm aware it was a new management, so it could have gone one or two ways. But uh, Anwar's come in, Steve Clark's come in, they've brought some good people along with them. Um, it's pro very professional. Um, they like things to be done in a certain way, and if you're not up to the standard, they let you know, um, and you need to reach that standard. Okay. Um, now we've talked a lot about pre-season in earlier shows, and, and this and that. But as a player, uh, and someone who came in or knew, and you mentioned the professionalism aspect, but it was a long pre-season, wasn't it? Oh yeah. Uh, it started back in June, yeah. um, and then obviously Ramazan mm. was uh, a clash with that. But the boys were unreal. Uh, the effort was 100% uh, maximum effort in there. Uh, it's a long pre-season, but again, w when you did join, they made you feel like it's a family club. So mm -hmm. when you did join, straight away you were welcomed mm -hmm. um, and they let you know what the level was and you just had to get yourself to that level. Okay. And, and uh, obviously Anwar's reputation of uh, coming from a professional background, uh, Steve Clark's mm -hmm. also as assistant manager. How much of an influence did that have in you coming to the club and then has their reputation kind of met your expectations or has it exceeded what where you where where how are you find finding your feet yeah um honestly th having them in charge is a big pull factor uh, i've spoken to other players and when they ask oh, who the manager is and you say and one and uh, straight away it's a great uh, um publicity for the club um and um, when training with them i've already improved my game uh, by 100 percent um in different areas that where I was struggling, they've already helped me improve there. Uh, they've helped the team, and it's just game intelligence. They've been there, they've been successful. So if you're not going to learn off them, who are you going to learn off? Yeah, fair point. Fair. Rav, um, bring you in here. You, you've known Anwar uh, professionally in terms of from a work environment mm. as well, and you know him personally, I guess. Um, tell us a bit about, we've, we've touched on it, but your, your role at Kick It Out and when that started and how it kind of evolved from what you're doing, what you did. You talked about your college days and y mm. you know you initially started to want to do business and you realised that your maybe your passion was in was in journalism and, and media. So, uh, you know, when did you start getting involved with Kick It Out? So that was when I was at university. Um, I'm, I kind of met up with someone who started a, a company called Football Exclusives. Um, we cover grassroots and, and non-league football, the sort of level that Touch is playing at. And um, because we were working with grassroots clubs and um, non-league clubs and, and working quite closely with the players and, and the fans as well, mm -hmm. um, Kick It Out approached us um, just to attend some of their conferences, um, create a little bit of uh, publicity for the events that they were doing and just work closely with them. Because I think at our organisation, me being Asian, um, my business partner, um, is why we had a lot of people who were uh, black, Asian, just working for us. So we as an organisation were actually very multicultural as well. Mm -hmm. and I think that's, that was something that, that Kick It Out saw. And mm -hmm. then they realised that, OK, they've got, we've got this organisation who are actually tapping into the, the levels of the game which probably needs the most uh, attention to. Uh, we've, we, you know, we all know what, the, um, what does go on at that sort of level. Um, so I think they saw that and noticed that uh, we had an ability to actually get close to these people and hopefully make a little bit of a change. Okay. Uh, now, again, going back to grassroots football, obviously that's where your knowledge is, your area of expertise. Um, I, I guess the question is to both of you in terms of the difference between uh, non-league football and your bog standard, which this show kind of is partly about. We have a, our own winter league, we have a summer league, which is very much about grassroots football. And it's about Sunday league football. Um, you, you obviously do a lot, hell of a lot of work and you have done over the years with non-league footballers and clubs and uh, touch from your perspective you've recently come in and now you're playing at that level. What is the difference between a Sunday league football team and a non-league football team? And I, I guess I'll throw the question to Rav first. I think with, with your non-league team I think there's a, 
you've got so many people from the professional game, Anwar being a prime example, who have come down and they see it as an opportunity for them to actually learn more. And at the same time, you've got there's there's not much of a difference between the non-league level and the grassroots level. So then you're getting players like Toch who are now being coached and, and mentored by someone like Amwa at the non-league slash grassroots bracket, um, which will only benefit him. And, you know, we all know how the first team at Sporting Bengal were doing last season and mm -hmm. how much of a difference Amwa's made. So all of a sudden you've got that grassroots have gone from what bottom of the table where they were last season all of a sudden up to mid-table. Mm. So the standard has, has gone up ever well, so much already. Um, I think the difference between the two is just you've got good players in, in at both levels, um, and I think if there's, there's a lot more. I think there's a lot more gems at the grassroots level that just need that little opportunity, which I think your players like Toch are getting mm. with Amor at the helm. Okay, uh, same question to you, Toch. In terms of you've played at Sunday League level, yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously you, you've come in now and you, you, you're, you're mixing it at a non-league level. What are the biggest differences between? Um, uh, the, the biggest, in terms of talent or in terms of uh, quality of play, it would be consistency. Um, the higher up you go, the less mistakes people make. So mm. consistency is the key. Um, the more consistent you are, the more, uh, the more successful you will be. So in grassroots, there'll be a lot of flair players, which is nothing wrong with that. Um, but you get them in the right way, you get them playing in the right areas, and then that's, that's the main difference. Both, though are heavily reliant on volunteers like yourself, Imro, um, and there's other people that just work in. There's no financial gain, there's no benefit, but it's giving back, mm -hmm. um, giving back, and the volunteers make the difference. Mm -hmm. um, the higher up you go, there's even more volunteers. Uh, it's just a shame there's not enough. There's never enough, I'd say. Yeah, exactly. Okay, fair point. Uh, while we're at that to on the topic of uh, grassroots, and uh, I, I guess kick it out, we've touched on it as well, and Rav's involvement with them, um, with, his, with his company at the match, um, Let's have a look at a short video. Uh, BFA and our academy, in particular, recently were part of a uh, of the of a, a very short video clip that they showed at their. Rav, correct me if I'm wrong. It was their um, a fundraising dinner at yeah, Stamford at Bridge yeah. at Chelsea last week, and we were very fortunate to be part of it. I don't think I think we, we were come a bit shocked ourselves actually because we we forgot that we did the video. So uh, I tell you what, let's have a look at that. It's only a two two to three minutes. Uh, it's a great piece of work and um, when we come back we'll talk a bit more about Kick It Out and grassroots football. Hatred disfigures our society, creates conflict and divisiveness and is a destructive force that has to be countered. Kick It Out has prioritised tackling prejudice and hatred across its education programs, working in partnership with others across the sport. I think Kick It Out has education at the core of every single thing we do, whether that's working with players or managers, clubs, grassroots, communities. It's really, really important that we put education central to everything. It's demotivating more than anything else. It's dehumanising. You feel, you, f you feel they're not being worthy and, and you're not good enough to be playing. I think Kick It Out do a great job. It's critical that organisations like Kick It Out educate people because a lot of racism emanates from ignorance. As a Muslim woman in football, it's actually been quite a unique experience for me because it's quite an isolated place to be. There aren't generally, in my journey, there haven't been a lot of Muslim women within the game. As a campaign, we want people to know what Kick It Out stands for. We want people who love football to know about Kick It Out. So what we hope to achieve through the education programmes is that people have a better understanding of what discrimination is, how to respond to discrimination and how to actually prevent it as well. What's the common goal? The common goal is football. And through that, if we can all share our experiences, share our cultural differences, and if Kick It Out and organisations like yourself are able to, are a platform to do that and work with clubs at grassroots, you're going in the right direction. There's a lot of work to do and we can never rest on our laurels. We always have to be proactive in working in partnership with both the football bodies and the communities that they serve. But we feel that in grassroots side, again, it's a massive area, but we have to help influence, help campaign, help empower communities to do this work themselves. It's not about kick it out coming in. It's about communities taking hold of this themselves because the most important thing is if you want to go and play football on a Saturday, 
at the weekend, that you can do that irrespective of who or what you are. I think it's really important that people get behind Kick It Out. It's campaigns, it's working in clubs and grassroots through to the, the elite level of the game. It's really important that we support their work. Um, they've done such fantastic things over the years and this is that next phase of the work that Kick It Out are doing. We need to continue doing this work. People might be aware of the fact that you can't say racist things or engage in discrimination, but people actually don't always know how to challenge it. And education's the only way of providing people the tools and the knowledge to, to challenge these things, to ask the right questions. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. That was, um, uh, like I say, a piece that they showed down at uh, Stamford Bridge last week for Kick It Out's uh, fundraising event. It's called Educate Not Hate. Um, great piece, and like I say, educate, uh, Kick It Out do some brilliant work um, in at grassroots level. Racism is something that 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 is it's it's not as uh, prevalent as it used to be, but it's there. Uh, there are elements of it, and um, Rav, obviously coming to you, you've been involved with Kick It Out, and. Um, I'm not quite sure how long it's been uh, in, in, in its uh, uh, existence, but h how important are organisations like Kick It Out to, to racism and, and, and Kick It Out to totally in terms of uh, grassroots football? I think you can't, you can't put a price tag on the work that they do. You can't put into words how much, of, um, how much work they're actually doing. And so much of it goes behind the scenes. Um, and you see so many things that do go behind the scenes. They, they often get unnoticed and they get at times almost underappreciated as well. Mm. Uh, me personally, when I was when I started up um, going to non-league football matches, I remember at the time I was an Asian going to football matches with a camera in my hand. And I remember the looks that I used to get, it was one of what is he doing here? Mm. And I remember it must have been maybe a year later then when I was starting working with Kick It Out um, and all of a sudden the perception changed. They realised that He's just a person with a cameraman who just happens to be Asian. Mm. Um, but I think organisations like Kick It Out do, do a tremendous, do a tremendous work. Okay, uh, Torch, obviously from your, you're a footballer playing at grassroots level. <laughs> um, how much? I know this season we had an incident, uh, incident, but uh, we were t talking off air. But how easy or how? Uh, w w what's your journey been like in terms of the experiences you've had playing at grassroots level? Um, luckily, I've, I like to say I've got quite a strong mindset. Um, with my job and whatnot, you learn to hear things and just ignore them. Um, mm. th there's been comments when I've been younger, but one comment that seemed to stick with me is, uh, is playing uh, as the only Asian player in a team. And the other manager after the game uh, spoke to our manager and said, oh, he's not bad for an Asian kid. And uh, I mean, I, I, I'm sure he doesn't mean it to come across mm. offensive, but it's, it's a case of, oh, can we not play football? It's a case <laughs> yeah. of... It, he obviously meant it as a compliment, well yeah. I hope he did, but that sticks by you, that drives you on. Um, mm. it, you want to prove people wrong and you want to show that the, we can play football. Okay, um, but I, I guess these are the challenges our uh, you know, past generations have faced, but it, it's a different type of racism that we're experiencing now at Grassroots, isn't it? It's not as open and as you know, uh, in your face as it used to be. Uh, you just touched on some of the experiences mm. that you've had and, and how it's going, but what more could be done, in your opinion, if any, that, uh, at, at that level to kind of, kind of make, take it to that next, I guess, that next level where we're not seeing, because it is still there. It's a bit difficult to say that, to answer that, if I'm honest. I think someone like Amwa, for example, who's got a very good reputation in the professional game, who's been around uh, managers, boardroom, the, the middle-aged, stereotypical white, um, boardrooms, if you like, and the fact that he, the work that he's doing with the Football Sports Federation, engaging with fans, different communities, uh, managers, um, chairman, stuff like that will, will have a big effect. Um, mm. Pioneers like him, pioneers like Zeshraman, um, giving back to the communities, they're little things that will uh, benefit the next generation, I think. Okay, so it's, so it's more about getting involved, I think, so we've had other people on the show and the, we've discussed about getting Asian faces, non-white faces on, on boards at a higher level, yeah. those where they're, uh, where they're making decisions, right? So is, is that something that, w that needs to be, we need to see more of? Yeah, I think so. And I think at the same time, I think it's Im important to, as well as we want to get you know, Asian faces in, into the boardroom, into these high positions, it's important that we're not focused on that. So I, I use myself as an example. I, I don't want to be perceived as 
um, an Asian in media. Mm. I want to be perceived as someone who works in media and football who just happens to be Asian. Mm. And I think that's the sort of that's where we want to get to. We want to get to having Asian faces in the boardroom as managers, uh, players in the leagues, who are footballers, managers who just happen to be Asian. And I mm. think if we can change that mentality, that that's the mentality that we want. Um, I think it will benefit us in the future. Okay, uh, touch obviously from your own perspective, your your, your work. You're in, a, you're, you're in a workplace where, it's, again, it's something that is not as many, uh, I guess, Asian faces mm -hmm. are involved and it's yeah. something that has moved on, it's evolved and we're seeing more and more. There has been an evolu evolution of it. But on the football pitch, obviously, this season we had an incident at Ilford. Um, when, when these situations happen, what, what are your thoughts that are going through? What's your mindset at that time? Yeah, I mean... Um, unfortunately, w when the inci incident at Ilford occurred, um, I was on the other side of the pitch, mm. so I didn't hear it. But then it would be uh, not a conflict of interest, but it'd be my responsibility as a police officer, maybe even to step in mm. um, or act as a professional witness. Um, but if if I do witness something like that, um, it's hurt. It's hurtful. It's very hurtful. Um, you take it personally, even if it might not be directed at you, it might be directed at a teammate. If one of my teammates was like like acting in such a way to an opposition um, player, it would be very hurtful for me as well. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't want to associate associate myself with someone uh, who finds that behaviour acceptable. Okay, um, f fair point, fair point. Right, guys, unfortunately we're out of time for this segment. Uh, when we come back, I want to learn more about um, Rav's role at, at the match and exactly what that is all about and how maybe for you guys watching out there how you can get involved with Rav and see what, what opportunities there are for you guys to work together as well. Uh, and also we'll touch more on, on uh, Toch's uh, fledgling career, I guess, but also we've got an international star on my left here as well and he's, he's our sporting, very own Sporting Bengal club captain. So let's go to a short break. When we come back, we can chat more to the two gentlemen in the studio tonight. Enjoy. See you in two minutes. <laughs> 